I found the weirdest telephone PSA maybe ever. Hi, by the way, welcome back to my channel where I cover nostalgic, obscure, or otherwise strange content. I found the weirdest telephone PSA maybe ever. And as soon as people stop driving by really loudly on the street, I will tell you about it. Are you driving a tractor? What's going on out there? This is nothing to do with anything, but right now, constantly, on a loop in my head is just like one line from that song, Big Green Tractor. I hate that song. So I don't really know how or why I do the things that I do. I fell down another rabbit hole, as I often do on YouTube the other night. The YouTube algorithm is just like, oh, Avery, yeah, we know her. She likes uh, true crime videos and weird VHS direct movies from 1983. So my, my feed is a, is a mixture of those two things. And for some reason on my feed, there popped up this telephone PSA from somewhere in the 1980s. This is not the PSA that I pulled up. This is from like uh, the 50s, it looks like. I'll, I'll do a video on that one later. Remember the telephone dot dot. Here we go. Telephone tips for kids. Apparently, it was started, and I could only find one thing on the internet after like 20 minutes of looking, so if anybody knows any more about this than I do, please let me know. Um, all I could find was one article from the Oklahoman, it was a, a, a local newspaper in Oklahoma in the 80s, and it was an article about how this lady had been on hold with customer service Apparently they were rude to her, and so she, like, told off the manager, yes, she, she spoke to the manager, told them that they needed to train their people better. And he was like, well, why don't you teach them? And then she was like, okay, and so she started teaching classes on, like, how to be polite on the phone, and did this in, like, business settings for, like, people working in customer service, but then started also teaching children how to be polite and respectful on the phone. Honestly, it's a huge power move. Like, good for her. Got bad customer service, made a career out of it. Remember the telephone doctor? Bad telephone manners will shock button tool. Remember the telephone doctor? And moving on from that, this whole PSA involves the creepiest puppets ever. Like, I don't like puppets unless it's like Jim Henson puppets or ALF, uh, and we just did that video, the last video was about, had that Beyond Belief episode with the creepy doll, but I'm just putting myself through it for no reason, apparently, because this is, I haven't seen this yet, but this, I have a feeling is gonna be rough. Auntie Bella's surprise and enter training video. This just reminds me of ages ago, some of you might remember I did that video on the Chuck E. Cheese training videos, and it was like, where did, wasn't it an entertainment production? This is a Chuck E. Cheese's University production. Let the entertainment begin. Something like that? I guess this is entertaining, so the 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 copyrights don't clash, I guess. I'm so scared. Come right in, oh Bobby and Abigail and little Bink. So is this their grandmother? I'm already confused. We're like 10 seconds in. Oh, I could just hug your ears off. I don't want to know how much, you, how hard you have to hug somebody before their ears come off. It sounds like a slasher movie in the 80s. I'm so delighted you could come and visit. And so is Hugo. Aren't you, Hugo? Hmm? <laughs> Hi there, Hugo. <laughs> We're delighted too, Auntie Bella. Okay, this is Auntie Bella. Okay. And they're spending the weekend with Auntie. Okay. I simply must have a bath. But I am expecting an important telephone call, so keep your ear on the phone and uh, take a message. Sure, hmm? Auntie Bella. Yeah. So these kids haven't been here like two seconds, and before they can even like put their stuff down, she's like giving them chores to do. Hey, a TV! It's like they've never seen a TV before. It's the 80s. I thought all kids in the 80s like raised themselves with TV. You just sat on my ankle! How do you sit on somebody's ankle? What? Abigail's fat old head is in the way. Whoa, that's unnecessary. <laughs> Never fails. As soon as you're in the middle of something, everybody wants to call you. Oh, skunk burgers. Skunk burgers, huh? You get a bink? No, I'm too little. Why, when I was your age, I used to answer the phone all the time. Are they not relatively all the same age? <laughs> 
God, whoever is on the other end of the line is really patient. Hey, Auntie Bella got some new chairs. Answer the phone. <laughs> and I don't think I've ever seen that picture before. This is every introvert when we get a phone call. We'll just, we'll come up with any excuse not to answer it. You kicked the cat. <laughs> you kicked Hugo in the face. Hello? <gasps> well, what do you know? They hung up. Auntie Bella gave you one job. I mean, sure, you're like six, but you had one job. <laughs> oh, well, this is a strange turn of events. Oh, goodness gracious me, I do have a special treat for those children. Everything about this is wrong. I don't... Now, where's my sponge there? Oh, there you are, you little rascal. I'm already regretting this video. Oh, not again. So they're calling back now. You go get it, Bink. But I'm too little. You're big enough for me to tickle you till oh. you turn purple. Oh. Oh. You know, usually you could just settle this with rock, paper, scissors, or... Howdy, partner. This is Buckaroo Bink, fastest phone answerer west of the Mississippi. Ah, yes, the way business professionals talk to each other. <laughs> well, you sound like a teeny little mosquito. I just... Oh, my God. Imagine you had an important business call and some kid answers the other end of the phone. It's just like, you sound like a cockroach to me, and then just hang. Uh, I... I do hope that call comes soon, though, or else there won't be a surprise. Can she not hear the phone from in there? Maybe take a bath before the kids come over for you to babysit them. May I just, I, hmm. Also, I feel like the necklace is going to get kind of tarnished and look like I wouldn't wear it in the bat and the glasses. Like, I don't know. Did I wash behind my ears yet? I don't know, Auntie Bella. It's your turn, Bobby. Yeah, I guess so. But I'm gonna turn the TV up so I don't miss anything. Oh, good. <laughs> Speak up a little bit, will ya? I can't hear a word you're saying. Oh my god, my mom hated to answer the phone when there was, like, any noise going on in the house. If she was on the phone and, like, our TV was too loud, she'd just, like, snap her fingers. And we'd all know that that me meant dial it down like 10 notches because she's on the phone to this day when i hear somebody snap my fingers i'm like oh shit do i need to turn the tv down i'm on an airplane there's no tv up here but still i said i can't hear you turn the tv down <laughs> we must have a bad connection or something bella is that you all i hear is cheers in the background ring little telephone ring <laughs> Does the other person on the other end of the line have, like, anything else to do? Because I wouldn't be calling back a fourth time at this point. Hello? Who? Oh, oh yeah, just a minute. Auntie Bella, it's for you! No, no, you take a message. You take a message. <gasps> oh, wait a minute. I don't think she can come to the phone right now. Yep, mm-hmm, this is good. She's probably all slippery and wet, you know? She's taking a bath. No. <laughs> no. No. God. Yeah. Yeah. Her handwriting looks like Stitch. Have you ever, like, has anybody been to Disney World or anything and gotten an autograph by Stitch as a kid? It looks just like that. <laughs> I don't think that's a cat. <laughs> I think they wanted it to be a cat. Here you go. Go get it. Atta boy! God bless the person who voiced Hugo. <laughs> Here I am, my little rooty tooties, clean as a whistle and fresh as a daisy. Did I get any telephone calls, hmm? Mm-hmm. You got lots of them, except one guy hung up. Yeah, one guy kept making noises like a mosquito. Why, any one of those could have been my dear friend Brian Whitestone. And he just happens to work as a clown for the circus, my apple pips. Oh, good. <laughs> the one thing that would make this special less creepy is clowns. <laughs> I haven't seen this yet, but I assume a clown will show up. So trigger warning for those of you who are terrified of clowns. I know we have some in our community that just can't handle it, and I don't blame you. And he just happens to be getting passes for all of us for tonight's circus. I don't want to see a puppet circus. <laughs> Wait a minute, everybody. I took a message from some guy. Now where did I put it? Did you not leave it on the the pad? <laughs> oh, I remember. I crumbled it up and threw it for Hugo to chase. Oh, oh she she was playing with Hugo. She bought Hugo. <laughs> Give me my clown message. 
quick, everybody help me find it! Ah, this tea is hot. That's not like a... I'm not like, the tea is scalding. It's just, it's genuinely hot tea. Here it is! And it says, um, hmm, call... Let's see. You could uncrumple it before you read it, right? <laughs> oh no! Hugo, did you eat part of that paper? <laughs> Maybe we could take Hugo to the animal doctor, Auntie Bella. Ooh. They could x-ray him and we could read the rest of the number in his tummy. And then the next part is it teaches kids how to scoop the rest of the phone number out of the kitty litter box. I certainly can't call Brian back without a phone number. Aw, skunk burgers. I do not like that expression. I feel like I can taste it in my mouth. It's not a taste that I want to taste ever. We are going to visit a doctor just as soon as I get dressed. It's the telephone doctor. Wait, I thought Auntie Bella was going to teach us about phone etiquette. Like, there's literally a telephone doctor? Hi, Auntie Bella. It's so good to see you again. Oh, so is this is this the lady that started it? I couldn't even find a picture of her. I really want to know more. I just I have some more questions than answers right now. Hi. Nice to meet you, kids. Hi. I'm the telephone doctor, and my job is to show people how to use the telephone better. <clears throat> okay, so she... The creator is the telephone doctor. That's her bit. Okay, I'm caught up. Sarah, <laughs> oh, I do beg your pardon, Chumley. Out of all the things that aged badly from this PSA, right? Because none of the information they give is going to be relevant anymore, probably. Out of all the things that age, though, it's that casually coughing to get somebody's attention. You can't do that anymore. Sarah. <laughs> Somebody coughs in my general vicinity anymore. I'm pulling out a rosary, dude. He has some very special talents. Delighted to meet you all. Now, if you'll just stick out your tongue. No. Please tell me if anybody out there has ever seen this before, if anybody's parents ever made them watch this or their school or whatever, please tell me. I'm so sorry. Well, I guess I had the first problem. The puppets kind of look like, at least this girl, she kind of looks like a Cabbage Patch doll, right? Like, it kind of just looks like they refurbed a Cabbage Patch doll. I said hello a whole bunch of times, but the person had already hung up. Oh my. Obviously a case of slowpokeitis. Not slowpokeitis. That sounds contagious. Obviously, and a bad one at that. Might I suggest... Not now, chum. Leave later. Oh. Why is this dude there? She's just like, shut the hell up. I am talking right now. When your friends come over, do you just leave them standing outside while you go on watching television or looking at pictures? We'll see, it all depends. Some people text me when they're at my door. Some people I know just so well, they just let themselves in. That, that's the case with everybody's best friend, right? They just kind of let themselves into your house when they get here. You must answer it quickly. Copy that. I can do that, Dr. Telephone. Telephone doctor. Miss Dr. Telephone. Ma'am. Hello, Graham residence. This is Abigail. Ooh, she knew how to answer it properly and everything. Like, she knew how to be polite. She just didn't do it the first time. What's the next problem? Me. <laughs> Same kid. <laughs> oh, could I do this one? He's so small and... Kind of creeped out by... What's his name? Chum? <laughs> Not now, Chumley. Later. Later. Sorry. I do not get good vibes from him. The guy on the other end sounded like a little mosquito. Oh my, Bink. It sounds like you've got a case of the telephone meanies. And the telephone what now? Let's never treat your home telephone as a toy. Oh, telephone meanies. Okay. Do I have to get a shot? Not unless you're talking about the COVID vaccine. Everybody out there get their COVID vaccine? Get the COVID vaccine. <laughs> Bill Gates himself told me to tell you that. Christ, please get your vaccine. It's even saved people's lives. I don't understand. How can the telephone save people's lives? You could call 911. Sometimes there's an emergency. Your mommy could fall down and get hurt. Or a fire could break out. Two vastly different scenarios but okay both valid when there's an emergency you can call the operator the operator if you have a dial phone the last hole is for the operator oh i saw i saw somebody i think in the comments of this video say something about this apparently back when this was made 911 wasn't 
available to the entire country. So they just told kids to get to the, you know, call the operator. My battery is dying. Hang on. Don't you die on me. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Where was I? Oh yeah, I was uncomfortable. <laughs> Remember, if an emergency ever happens that makes you say, uh-oh, go to the phone and dial O. Well, that's a catchy way for kids to remember. I learned about 911 from Mrs. Doubtfire when Robin Williams is doing the voices in the beginning of the movie. 911! 911! Police! Civic authorities! Some parents even take red nail polish and circle the O for operator. Did anybody's parents do that? My parents never did that. Although we had a wall phone that was like too high for me to reach when I was that little, so maybe that's why. It's uh, your turn now, Bobby. I like the way she says the name Bobby. <laughs> I even yelled at him to speak up, but I couldn't hear anything, so I hung up. Oh, Bobby, it sounds like you've got a case of the rudes. <laughs> the rudes. <laughs> it isn't very nice, Bobby. One might even call it icky. Chumley. Shut up, Chumley. Jesus. I think you're well on the road to recovery. Okay, so all the kids have learned how to talk on the phone in the 80s. Any more problems? Uh, yes. But wait, there's more. This guy wanted to talk to Auntie Bella, so I yelled for her real loud. So then I took the message, but Hugo ate most of it. Don't blame Hugo for this. This is your fault. You've got a case of the yells and the blabs. Oof, the yells and the blabs. I could have handled the yells or the blabs, but not the yells and the blabs. And we need you to take clear messages. She's a very, like, likable teacher. I can see how she did well teaching people. But it is interesting to me how <laughs> she's supposed to be talking to the puppets, but because she's clearly talking to us, she keeps breaking the fourth wall. It just keeps tripping my brain up. First, don't yell. Go tell. If a call's for someone else, go tell that person. See, this is why texting was, like, one of the greatest things to happen to us. Now you can just text somebody. You don't need all of this. You see, the caller doesn't need to know everything. If Auntie Bella's in the tub or using the bathroom, the caller doesn't need to know that. Yeah, Auntie Bella can't come to the phone. She's taking a massive shit. <laughs> God, ew. That's a lot to remember. Is it, Abigail? Is it? If your next door neighbor came over and asked for your mom, and your mom was in the bathroom, you'd say, Mom will be with you in just a few minutes. You wouldn't tell them everything, would you? I feel like Abigail would. By the way, they were waiting on a phone call. So now she's taking them out of the house to have somebody else teach them about how to answer the phone instead of doing it in-house herself, so they could be missing countless other phone calls while this is happening. Remember, if you don't know the caller, don't tell anyone you're home alone. Hell yeah. Good for the telephone doctor. And now I think uh, that... <clears throat> don't forget me. Ugh. Oh, please don't start singing. Don't start. Remember the telephone doctor. Remember the telephone doctor. When that telephone rings on so quickly. Oh, oh, there's a there's a second verse. Oh, and that telephone rings on so quickly. An inflatable phone. Don't you dare hesitate, or you might be too late. Among other things, I have issue with Chumley's lyrical abilities. I, I don't mean this as any offense to the people who made this, because it is a it is a you know a good idea to teach kids these things, how to answer the phone and practical things like that. When I saw this for the first time, when I previewed just like the first minute. I actually wasn't sure if it was real <laughs> or if it was some kind of like sketch from somewhere. <laughs> I had to like double check. I was like, is this the real thing or is this from Adult Swim? This is just over the top creepy. If your dad's at the club or your mom's in the tub. If dad's at the club? <laughs> Why was that the only example given for where dad could be? Take messages, write them and check them. That is a ridiculously big pencil, and oh, a trumpet. Take messages, write them, and check them. Take messages, write them, and check them. Okay, hang on, wait. So after I take the messages, and I write them. Take messages, write them, and check them. Remember the telephone doctor. 
Yay! Oh, that yeah, was very really good. good. Yay. I can't explain it. When Chumley's on the screen, I feel the need to put distance between myself and the screen. No offense to the puppeteer, just the puppet in general. I'm, I'm very, I'm very afraid. <laughs> All right, my friends, I think we've cleared everything up. Oh, good. Are we going to get through this without seeing a puppet clown? I'll get it. Auntie Bella, it's for you. She'll be right here. Hello? Wasn't Auntie Bella, like, standing right next to her? It took her a hot second to get over there. She could have just handed it to her. Oh, it's all set. He has the passes for the circus, and we're to meet him at the front entrance at 7. Yay. Remember the telephone doctor. Oh, we get this song. You know what? I'm not even going to complain about the song because I didn't have to see a clown puppet. Hell yeah. <laughs> Nancy Friedman and the Peppercorn Players. Dare I ask? The Peppercorn. It's listed like that's something I should know about, but I can't find anything in a cursory search. So if anyone knows any more of those um, <laughs> works, the, the Peppercorn Players, please let me know. I haven't learned too much, but I am confused and frightened. It's about every day for me, I guess. But yeah, what are your what are your thoughts? What uh, please share in my suffering down in the comments section. I don't feel like being alone right now. <laughs> Nothing else to say about that. I'll probably see it when I close my eyes tonight. But thanks for being here. <laughs> thanks for watching, liking, commenting, subscribing, sharing. Everything you do to support this channel means the world to me. Without you guys, I would have nobody to share these terrifying experiences with, and that wouldn't be any fun, so thank you. Um, if you're new here and you're a fan of nonsense, maybe consider sticking around. I post nonsense all the time. Uh, and remember, my name is Avery. I'm a YouTuber if you say so, because thanks to you guys, this is technically a YouTube channel. We could go slow or make it go fa- I hate st <laughs> We all know that song isn't about a big green tractor, right? It's a- it's- a it's about other things. It's it's euphemism. Shame on you, Jason Aldean. I don't I don't did Jason Aldean write that song? I don't know. Whoever whoever wrote it. Shame on you.